I am here with uh, one of the most accurate prophets I know. Uh, can I tell you a trade secret? I analyze how accurate prophets are by obviously what they do publicly. But when they prophesy to me personally, uh, and James didn't know what he was doing. He, he just said, I'm just being obedient. I'm just saying what God is saying. This is James Gall, the prophet. Uh, and and uh, he had the name of the organization before it became Middle East TV, uh, which our ministry owns right now, and details about it that were so precise that it absolutely got my attention. Uh, James Gall, I am looking forward to this uh, interview. Uh, uh, would I be stepping on toes if I asked you to tell me uh, what you just heard from the Lord about this particular interview? Yeah, I no, you won't step on toes. You will push me forward. How's Good. that? Okay. All right. So I want to pray. How's that? And Good then night. we'll move. Father, thank you for this time. We bless all of the IT, the management, the direction. We pray over the internet and we say that Jesus is the God of this world, not the devil. And so we bless the airwaves. And we ask you guide our hearts and our thoughts that the word of the Lord would go forth with precision and clarity in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, that's so, all I got to say is the amen, which means so be that prayer. <laughs> you're right. So those who don't know, okay, Sid and I have had a friendship relationship over multiple years, okay, and, uh, and then also share some friends as well in common. Now, so the Lord speaks to me often in dreams, and they're about world events, regional events. They're about people, but they also are about my own life. And this morning, I simply, in a dream, hear the voice of the Lord, and it says, get ready. I heard, get ready. And then in the dream, because it's, see, God doesn't neither sleep nor slumber, and our spirit, and God in our spirit, and so it's interactive. And so he says, get ready, get ready. And I'm going like, for what? He says, because you're about to have your most strategic media interview of your lifetime. Well, I am, I am looking forward to it with as much anticipation as you, and as much anticipation as you, our viewers right now. Now, the thing that caught well, even before I get to that, uh, because in all the years I've known you, I didn't realize that I knew about the Kansas City Prophets. I didn't realize the number that they had. Uh, everyone, well, in, in my realm was focusing on Bob Jones, who sure. is now in heaven. But there were seven of you, and you were one of the seven Kansas City Prophets. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, six of them have been promoted. And it's as if the mantles they had, especially with this greater glory that is coming, James, are being just deposited mm -hmm. into you. Are you finding your gifts are getting sharper or different at mm -hmm. this point than they, they were before all six went to heaven? Let, let me clarify for a moment, is that in many years ago, John Wimber publicly recognized seven different leaders mm -hmm. as prophets. And then there was a book that was written by a spirit-filled Anglican bishop out of England called Some Said It Thunder. So not everybody lived in Kansas City, So, but those who were together in Kansas City, out of the, the primary ones were Paul Kane, John Paul Jackson, and Bob Jones, and then myself. And then there were some others that lived in other parts of the country. Now, so I 
didn't mean to say that all six have gone to be with the Lord. Uh, but of this group that was in Kansas City, I'm going to rehearse this, and I will answer your questions because it's really important. On 2-22, 2014, Bob Jones, who was my spiritual papa and to many as a seer, he that isn't the day he died. He died on 214, Valentine's Day. But he was a seed put into the earth, buried on 222, 2014. One year later, to the very date, John Paul Jackson, dreams and mysteries, streams, he went to be with the Lord quick. And he was a seed put into the earth on 222. 22, 2015. Then on 2019, Paul came then, who at his peak was a, a, a statesman, had his trials, his ups and his downs. But he was a seed put into the earth exactly five years later to the exact date that Bob Jones mm. was. So you had these seer prophets. Bob Jones, 2-22-2014. Paul Cain, 2-22-2015. And then Bob, uh, Paul, excuse me, Bob, Paul Cain on 2-22-2019. Five years. I was at all three memorials. I spoke at Paul Cain's. And when I did, there was a presence of God that came into the room, and I had a God encounter in the middle of that memorial. So, since then, the Lord has been distributing gifts, mantles, authority. What about me? What's happened for me is there is greater authority on my voice. Am I in a higher realm of revelation? I'm actually am being restored, recovering, to the realm that I walked in 30 years ago and with a greater authority. So it comes across as though I am in another realm. But I will mention that then there are others, and I'm going to mention a name, Sean Bowles, with the detailed word of knowledge. He was my student when he was like 18 years old in Kansas City. He inherited a prophetic grace. So there are many who are now emerging. But then what about me? I am a bridge from the past to the present, to the present to the future. So am I increasing? Yes, in this hour, I am entering in beyond the veil into a dimension of clarity and impact that I have not known for, at this level, for maybe 20 years or so. James, the moment you said that, what just came out of your mouth, mm -hmm. the glory descended. Did you feel that? But you're yeah. a seer. Did you see that? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a feeler first, and then I'm a seer, and then I hear. But, you know, so I just speak right now. There is a mantle of authority, and it isn't available for a one, but when it is released, it's available to the many. So guess what, folks? Plug right in for an increase of revelation, but for the double. It's an increase of revelation, and it's an increase of the double. We are moving into the double for our trouble. So plug in for greater revelation, but greater authority on your voice in Jesus' name. Okay, I want to start not where we originally were going to start, but I want to start at a different spot. Mm -hmm. uh, when I spoke to you the most recent, a few days ago, um, I, I asked you a pointed question 
because many of the words that were coming out of your mouth when I spoke to you mm -hmm. were identical to a prophet I've had many times on by the name of Tracy Cook. Mm -hmm. And you said uh, mm -hmm. you had never heard of him beyond people told you he was on my show. Mm -hmm. uh, I had never met him mm -hmm. and for sure never intentionally never heard his words because in early January, before the news knew all about the uh, pandemic and, 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 and the coronavirus uh, crisis uh, that, that was going on, before that, you had a dream about it. Would you tell me uh, what you yes. saw in that dream? Yes, I will. Um, now, folks, some of what Sid and I have rehearsed and some of what maybe we have not rehearsed I am just flat out decided to pull the cork out of the bottle and just go for it. Now, I, I, I'm going to say something I've never said before because I have such a holy awe and, re and reverence for God. I mm -hmm. say, yay, God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Yes, yay, God. Yes, God. You know, there is a fire that people are going through and it is, are they going to just build their own little, excuse me, altars, their platforms, or are they being tested? They're being tested. Will you build his? Whose reputation are you building? So, on Tracy Cook, had I heard of his name? Yes, because friends had sent me, said, you need to watch this. And I prayed, and my discerner went, no, I don't. And I wondered, why? So I ask Holy Spirit questions. And he goes, I don't want you to be an echo. I want you to be a voice. And so it wasn't prejudice or anything of that nature of why I didn't watch the interviews with Tracy Cook. It was that it was a restraining of the Holy Spirit. So back in January, then I had. I call these clips. These are shorter like dreams. And then they go into a sequence. So I saw in Wuhan, China, I saw laboratories. And I saw, I didn't know the words all to use, but I saw bioengineered man-made virus and this, so I see things, and then I have knowings, and I see, and then, or uh, then I hear. So I saw a laboratory in Wuhan, China, and that there was being bioengineered a man-made virus to release in the earth. My knower went, man will say it came from a wet market, and the Lord said it did not, not in its or origin. It originated in Wuhan in a biological uh, lab, man-made, to be released, not from a wet market. I'm not saying it didn't get released, someone picked it up, and then they go there. That part, the Lord didn't show me. Okay, I want to be honest. That part I don't know. But what I do know is what I saw. I saw that there was being a weapon. You heard what I just said. A weapon being biologically engineered in a laboratory in Wuhan to be released upon the world. And uh, tell me some more. Did you see anything else you can tell me about it? I can again say that I knew that it would be said that it came from a, the wet market, but that it didn't in its origin, okay? Now, this then leads to a sequence of things that then where it's only then two and a half weeks ago, I went into an encounter. And that, by the way, I think is why I said I wanted you on the show, but mm -hmm. go ahead. Yep. So I went into an encounter, and by the way, I, this next piece, I submitted to authority that I walk with. Because I know the price that there can be and the cost that there can be on 
going on the edge. So, but about two and a half weeks ago, in a very vivid dream, I had a book come and appear before me. It had a dragon on the outside of it, and it, it was the title of it was The Global Dragon Warfare. Now, it was a manual. It flipped open, and I could read the table of contents. And there were 12 chapters in the book, but it was the Global Dragon Warfare Manual. I opened it up in the dream. I go to the table of contents, and there were 12, we could call them stages or phases, but in the manual, they were chapters. In yellow highlight marker, it highlighted stage seven. And my knower, see, this is like a combination of seeing, hearing, feeling, knowing. So I saw dream, dragon, read it, global dragon warfare manual, flips open, table of contents. I see 12. So I saw that there would be 12 stages or phases highlighted in yellow on the seventh stage. Uh, and let uh, me set a stage yeah. for those that aren't yeah. quite getting yeah. something you're saying. Sure. When you say global war, uh, warfare dragon, uh, global warfare uh, dragon manual, mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you talk about the book, yes. that is just as in the Bible in uh, chapter, I believe it's 12 of Daniel, mm -hmm. it talks about a book of life. There yes. are many books in yes. heaven and the devil has no origination, so he's a counterfeit artist of Absolutely. what goes on in heaven. So mm -hmm. it makes sense if there are books in heaven, then the devil has books for, him, for his people. And Paul the Apostle said in the New Testament, we are not to be ignorant of the devil's schemes. If we are not to be ignorant, that means that we have access or we can have access to what is God's plans, but we also, according to the will of the Lord and the leading of the Holy Spirit, not by pushing yourself out somewhere into a fake, false, prophetic, occult realm of astral projection. No, 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 no. I don't push myself anywhere. I worship God. I pray. I ask questions, and the Lord brings me into this. So, Paul said we're not to be ignorant of the devil's schemes. So we can see into, hear into, peer into the schemata, the, the blueprints of the enemy at times. So that's what this is. And so I saw a manual of spiritual warfare is what you could call it of a global nature, the global dragon warfare. I opened it up, highlighted on the seventh chapter or seventh phase, it said global pandemic. And it was highlighted because that is where we are. But stage six was the scourge of fear. That is what was being released to lead up unto the seventh stage, which is the global pandemic. I saw into the eighth, and it was global economic collapse. Now, what do you do with these things? So yes, that's just happened two and a half weeks ago. I have submitted this to prophets, intercessors, spiritual warfare experts, and we have multiple confirmations about the war with the red dragon. Tell me a bit, if you can, um, about this fear, because I see it all over the map. And unfortunately, I see it in Christianity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it, it's over the top. And what I think in my mind anyway mm -hmm. is fear then leads to anger. Anger then leads to murder. 
uh, fear leads to depression and then anger and then, you know, there's this, I, and striking out at anyone. And I see all these ingredients going on that, mm -hmm. that uh, would be satanic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, let me touch the fear piece because in the dream, again, I see things, I hear things, I know things. And after I wake up out of these kinds of levels of encounters, my room is often uh, charged with a presence of the Lord. This is how I know that these are dreams from God, not the devil, see? That I know they're from God because I am catapulted and the room was charged with the presence of destiny, of destiny. So I was peering into the enemy's plans to cut them off, to delay them, or actually even stop the progression. Now, but what you said is the fear factor. The very foundation of this global dragon warfare was this. This is amazing. It said, he who teaches people to fear rules. Hmm. It was an underlying philosophy. He who teaches people to fear will rule. I'm going to say it again slower because this is vital for people to grasp. He who teaches people to fear will rule. And that is the underlying whole foundation to this global demonic assault. It is to create the scourge of fear, so even a pandemic will loom as though it is larger than it actually even is. And so isn't it what uh, uh, Job said, the thing that I feared has come upon me? Mm -hmm. And see, God knows this, but the devil knows in part, but he only knows in part. And so, but the enemy, knowing this part, the foundation, the philosophy is he who teaches, or let's say cultivates a culture of fear. He who creates a culture of fear will ultimately rule. So that is what the spirit... Behind, okay, behind the, the spirit of fear, behind global control, this is the issue. Behind global control, there is always a culture of fear. If you look at the former Soviet Union, of which we love the Russian people. We love the Chinese people. We love the people from the UK. We love the, the Latin people. We love all the world. So I want to be real clear before we proceed any further at all. What I am presenting is not an anti-Asian. It is not an anti-China. It is Chinese. It is not an anti-Korean. It's not an anti-Russian. It's not an anti-patriotic American. No. God so loved the world. He has a plan for every kindred, every tribe, every nation. But the demonic has plans, stratagems. And so I just want to be very clear because I will, I will not partner with creating a culture of fear. I've made a very overt decision in the last 10 years. I will not be a gloom and doom prophet. I will not. I am a good news prophet, but it does not mean I live in denial. Mm -mm. I know I'm not an ostrich with my head stuck in the ground. Some want to be. So he who creates the culture of fear will rule. This is really important. And if you study civilizations through history, fear will be the underlying uh, force that causes control, takeover, oppression, etc. So he who creates the culture of fear will rule. So, but Jesus, God, has not said, 
God has not given us the spirit of what? Fear. Fear. But, but he's given us what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Oh, okay. Let's work on, uh, I mean, I'm just going to flip this interview for a moment, okay? He's given us not, and some of you need to repeat this right now. God is not the author of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power. Sid stands for the supernatural. His whole branding is it's supernatural. So God is not the author of fear. God is not the author of the global dragon warfare, but the enemy is. And it produces fear. Power, faith propels, fear paralyzes. Fear puts people in straight jackets, and they live paralyzed. Faith propels. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, only love will make a miracle. Faith works through love. You got to love as Jesus loves. You got to love the Jewish people. You got to love the people and the places that are closest to the heart of God. But the one I want to get to is this. He's not giving us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a, what's the third line, Sid? Sound mind. Sound mind. What is a lot of this battle for today? It's about how we think. A sound mind. And a lot of people and in the church are getting into irrational fear. Right, Sid? Unfortunately, that's true. How is this going to play out, or will it, in the political area of, say, this next presidential election? Yeah, very smart. Sid Roth, I think you might know how to add uh, dots together, okay? So, I, I want to be um, honoring, because we're to honor authority. And yet, I want to be truthful. We have one particular party that is uh, a bedfellow, something in common with this particular great nation of China. Is that not true? It's, uh, of course, we have a Democratic Party that is a bedfellow with China. Go ahead. I'll okay. say it if you want. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm that I'm going to have us say it together. Okay. So we have one particular group that is truly in bed partnering with, and I even wonder if not being financed to a certain degree. And then we have another who is rising up to disrupt Donald Trump, President Donald Trump. At this point in time, will go down in history as the great disruptor because he has an assignment. Now, do I agree with all of his mannerisms? No, I don't. But do I agree with his leadership? Absolutely. And do I agree with all of the bold stances this man has been taking, like moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? That is biblical. So, yes, we have a person and a window of opportunity that is put before us to help turn, turn, turn this nation. Now, politics do not turn a nation. The church does. But we have been too passive in going forward in taking at times a stand. So, but the Lord has raised up uh, one with a leadership mantle upon his life to challenge and bring disruption and cut the cords. You know, we talk about soul ties, like a person can have a wrong soul tie. And right, with another free. person or something. And, and to get free, they got to cut it. Right. Right now, we've got a war going on. Are we going to keep these tubes feeding us or are we going to pull them out or cut them off 
And this particular president is frankly a great disruptor and he's coming along and he, right now it's the who. And what did he just do? I saw the who was a now a Trojan horse. The who, the World Health Organization. Oh, okay. Is the who is right. a Trojan horse that we have funded and we have promoted. It sounds right. But it's amazing. The other party is very upset over him pulling the cord. <laughs> Again, I'm putting dots together. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> you are. And and one of the bold, another bold thing he did, he just removed our funding. What is that? That would be a legal basis because the WHO has a big base in where? Wuhan, China. <laughs> uh, I, okay, I, I have to push the envelope. Is President Trump going to win the next election? Okay. You know who you're talking to. I do. I am an intercessor. I'm also a teaching prophet, not only a declarative prophet. So there is always a warfare around a new beginning. There is always the read in the book of Revelations, the dragon is there ready to devour the new the new birth the male child so that it's a principle and the dragon is always there so there is a warfare always on your life on families cities churches ministries nations globally of the dragon satan ready there to devour now i believe that it is the will of god for president trump Donald J. Trump. By the way, he has a generational inheritance in revival that a lot of people don't know anything about. He has in the White House the Bible of his great aunts who were intercessors in the great 1952 Hebrides Islands revival. I have to believe they prayed for Donald having no idea their prayers were so powerful. I'm done research on the, on, on the Hebrides Island revival. Peggy and Christine Smith, two older women, 84 and 82 years old, and how they prayed the word, and they prayed, oh, that you would rent the heavens and come down. Well, God did, and Duncan Campbell, and that's a whole other issue. But Donald Trump literally has, as an inheritance, the Bible of his great aunts who were the two, two of the intercessors of the great Hebrides Island revival. Now, having said that, I have been shown what could happen. It is what would be the fullness of God's will. I saw, I'm gonna jump into the Supreme Court justice issue. Is that all right, Sid? <laughs> that was my next question, but go for it. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's weave it together. So when, if you guys will remember, um, Judge, Supreme Court Justice, now Kavanaugh, and when his um, hearings, when he was nominated by President Donald J. Trump to be the next Supreme Court Justice, everybody was talking about, a lot of people were, how this was going to fully tip the scales. Well, I started praying into it, I mean, into uh, conservatism. And I started praying into it, and yes, it was an important piece. But the Lord showed me that Donald Trump was appointed, he was assigned to put in place three constitutionally conservative judges. This was after, and I might not say the name correctly right now, Gorsuch, as he was already put in place, which will be a great justice then the battle waged more over the kavanaugh appointment while that happens i had dreams visitations and the lord came to me and he said that it was his will for kavanaugh to make it in and like many you have to pray the promise 
but he showed me that President Donald Trump was assigned to appoint a third judge. But I saw that a judge, and I know who it is, would hang on to try to stay on the bench in case Trump would not get reelected and then withdraw after his election so mm -hmm. as to secure a liberal justice in this person's place. So the Lord showed me that he has Trump an assignment to appoint a third justice, and he told me she will be an Esther. This third appointee. Excuse me, will she be, wait, it'll be a woman? Is that what you're saying? Yes, okay, I am. go ahead. It, she will be an Esther. It'll be a woman. And she will be an Esther, regal, smart, with authority. And he's told me, he said, and she will be used, this Esther, to tip the scales towards true constitutional conservatism. But it would happen in the second term. Well, the glory just came back on that particular statement. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, now I feel it now too, okay? I sense, see, we, but we cannot go into this automatic neutral gear. Case or all, or all, what will be, will be. That's not the way the kingdom works. God reveals, and then we pray and we work the promise. Faith without works is dead. And so there's a promise that revealed, then we must birth the promise. So I believe it is the will of the Lord for President Trump to be reelected for a long-term reason, if Jesus tarries any at all, and is to turn this nation for lineage and legacy unto, this was the exact phrase the Holy Spirit gave me, to true constitutional conservatism. So I believe it's God's will for him to be reelected. Now I've had another then experience and that happened in January of 2019 when I was touring for my first time, President Reagan's um, museum library. I think it's in Orange County, California. And I was walking through there. I was watching the documentaries. It's a brilliant, amazing place. It'd be worth anybody's visit. My first time, I'm walking through, and the Holy Spirit arrests my attention. And he says, you know that President Reagan was known as the great communicator. And I go, yes. And he said, and you know, at this point in time, President Trump will go down as the great disruptor. And I go, yeah, I know. But he spoke something to me about his future. And I go, okay. And he spoke something to me about later in the middle of a second term. He would go in praying that he will become he will, a praying president. There's a difference. He will become, Lord willing, in the middle of the second term, he will, there will be such an apprehension of God in his life that he won't only have gone in by praying, he will be a great praying president who God will move on his heart and he will be a part of welcoming in the great awakening. You know, I think it's it's important for me to clarify something. Yeah, it is. And that is the, uh, the, the global dragon warfare manual of which you you only saw i think three of the sections yeah. correct yes okay. right. the reason you saw it is to pray against it so it doesn't happen right. you know it's our job gets easier when we know exactly what the devil's doing then it's kind of easy to go against what he's doing so when one of the points you made was the uh, economy collapsing that's not necessarily so 
if the church acts like that Supreme Court justice will, like Esther, let's yeah. pray and fast for three days and watch the heart of the king change in on, our, on our behalf. Absolutely. And that there will be five words for this year, 2020, probably and beyond. Repent. Reset. We are right now in the middle of the Great Reset from Passover to Pentecost. We are in what will be called, it is called, God calls this the Great Reset. Passover to Pentecost, 50 days, we're in the Great Reset. And it's right now, see, just don't get, just be excited about that things are changing and businesses are going to open back up and this and that and whatever, okay, a gradual rollout. But this is a time of first repentance, second reset. That's where we are. It's followed by recalibration. It's a chiropractic adjustment hmm. that is brought to econo global economics. It's brought to nations in alignment. Now, something that... Would Excuse be me. It's yeah. also brought to us, to you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you see, this isn't just the whole big no. world picture. This, this applies to us as individuals. Let your spiritual ears be listening. Go ahead, James. See, absolutely. See, when I'm talking macro, I'm talking a lot of what I call macro vision, big. But a camera has lenses that goes like this. And it goes from the large to then I'm going to now call it the microvision. The microvision is you. The microvision is your life. And all of this is also about every individual person to call us into back to repentance, call us into a reset, call us into recalibration. Now, I'm going to go off for a moment, but it's important. 18 years ago, when ministering in Canada, at the Miracle Channel, I prophesied 18 years ago that e-church would come into being 18 years ago, e-church. And what I said was, it will come into being when it is relevant and necessary. About a month or so ago, I started reliving prophecies I gave 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and I started having the Holy Spirit. This is something that's never happened with me before, and I am seeing clips of things that I have prophesied over my tenure. One of them I relived was this that happened 18 years ago, where I prophesied each church would come about when it would be of necessity and be of relevance. When I relived and I saw me prophesying that, I wake up and the Holy Spirit says, these are those days. The reason I went into that is because, you see, this is very personal. And it affects you, Sid, E-Church. Let me tell you how it affects me, just, just a little aside. Yeah. Uh, we are making plans to have on our, our social media uh, discipleship material. Uh, yes. We are now reaching on such a, a post like this, a million people rather than the thousands. It's totally transformed yes. uh, what we're doing. And we're not doing it because we're so smart. We're doing it because God is so smart. He has confined us in the house. And the only thing I have it's this little iPad and iPhone. And oh. that's what I'm working on on my kitchen table. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And I'm in my home. Right. And I, I personally, I'm reaching more people through the multiple digital formats that are available right now in my home than I have by traveling all over the world. Now, uh, how's that tie in with Bob Jones' word of the billion soul? Harvest. I like you, Sid. This is so awesome. I'm going to finish the e church. So, e church, electronic church. Now, folks, I'm not prophesying that this 
the E Church displaces or replaces local congregations and mega churches. That's not what I'm saying. And some could run with that and say, well, you heard James Gall say that. No, I said E Church comes in, into being when it is of necessity and relevant. That is now. Now, but what it is, it's additions to the Father's house. It's not to replace or displace. It's like it's God is expanding the house. So there are actually, James, I see it just just slightly a little different from the and absolutely you need to not be with a machine. You need to be with a person. Uh, otherwise, who's going to uh, uh, iron sharpens iron? That's right. I mean, that would be all be left out. You won't even learn how to love if you're dealing right. with just uh, with, with just a computer. Mm -hmm. um, but how? But I see so many people coming mm -hmm. to the Lord that mm -hmm. the local churches will not be able to contain it, especially with the avalanche of souls that is coming in. And a lot of it through media through social media, which I'm re using a, a broad stroke, calling it e-church, okay? So e-media, digital. Guess what? The devil did not invent the World Wide Web. God did. And we must be shrewd, more shrewd than the world, and we must be, we must invade this space, which thank God for many, who are stepping to the plate in this hour. Let's go over to the a Bob Jones piece that you brought up. I think it's in 1983 at a gathering in Kansas City that Bob Jones prophesied about three different things that would be signs of when a great uh, revival, particularly a youth awakening, when it would begin. Now, one of the three signs was this. It's absolutely outrageous. He said, when laborers in the rice fields in China, do you hear me? God's got a plan. The devil tries to mess up the plan. But God's plans are higher. And Bob Jones said, when the laborers in the rice fields in China are watching 24-7, 365 worship and prayer on unplugged television sets on their wrist. Huh. You're talking I, about this. Yes. I, I wish I had mine on right now. <laughs> I was ministering in uh, New Jersey at, at a church, and a man wa uh, worked at Wall Street. And when I shared that prophetic word, he took off his smartwatch and he threw it up at the platform to me. Because, see, that, this is that. And he said that there will be laborers in China. Now, it's not just China. Who will be watching 24-7, 365 worship and prayer on unplugged 1983, unplugged right. television sets on their wrist. And he said that that, but, but that, was, that, that was like Dick Tra Tracy uh, had that. It was so, like science fiction. It wasn't in real life. And listen, everybody was like scratching their heads and going, yeah, Bob, you're a parable and we know it. And we don't know <laughs> what you just said. But it was true. And these are those days. And so back to where we began about these, you know, seers. By the way, there's multiple streams of the prophetic. So this is not me now exalting only the seer stream. That's not it at all. It's just that I have an inheritance with that particular um, camaraderie, that company of prophets that came forth. So um, because there's many diversities. Thank God for people like Bishop Bill Hammond with Christian International, who's probably activated more people into a prophetic gift than any person in all church history. I know that was a big statement I just made. No, I believe that too. But it's true. I said and activated into a prophetic gift. Now, so we are living in days of great opportunities. See, consider this. 
there are defining moments in a person's life, defining moments in a family, in a city, a nation, a church, a ministry, in the world. At the end of World War II, it was a defining moment. Things never returned as they were previously. The nations were realigned. And in fact, there were nations that were like put together that were never put together before, like Yugoslavia or Iraq. And they were mm -hmm. brought together by a group of leaders. And, it, and they weren't really, before that, they, they were a part of, they were a nation, but the, those nations didn't like, Yugoslavia didn't exist. And then, so there's defining moments. And life did not return as usual. And we had the Cold War. We had the Soviet Union and all of that that then emerges and comes forth. Life did not return as usual. We had a defining moment at 9-11. And life did not return as normal. And we entered into a global war of fear. Life after this will not return as we have previously known it. Consider these thoughts. What has been touched in this current situation? Athletics, entertainment, medical, elections, politics, church, religion, weddings, funerals, youth athletics, education, on and on and on and on and on. Media, Hollywood, it's all been touched. We, though, in coming out on the other side, we're entering into an entire new era, an entire new era. A lot of us prophesied about 5780 and 2020 and beyond. And many of us, several of us said, this is not just a new day. This is what I said. We are not just crossing over into a new day or a new year or even a new decade. We are crossing over an entire new era. But what we maybe didn't comprehend is the fullness of that new era. Noah goes into an ark. He comes forth into an entire new era in civilization. And I had another encounter where I was given a scroll. I opened it up, and it's a blueprint. And I started building an ark of his presence with family members. People see that what's happening, the word gets out, in, and it was a dream, and people started coming. Now, it was like loaves and fishes. The blueprint. Excuse me, what do you mean an ark with family members? Explain what you're saying. Noah built an ark. Right. It was for the preservation. And who was it that was on the ark with him? His family and animals. And there were eight. Eight. Eight is a new, new beginning. So in my <laughs> dream, it's full of prophetic symbolism. I follow. Yeah. And so I'm given a scroll, but it's a blueprint when I unrolled it. And it is a blueprint on building an ark. Now, it took me time to then decipher, decipher this. So, and then it multiplies, it multiplies, it multiplies in the dream. And then there's scores, there's hundreds, there's thousands then of arcs, arcs of his presence being built. Then I wake up out of this encounter and a word was sitting on me. And it says, as it was in the days of Noah. This happened about two months ago. As it was in the days of Noah. And I'm going... Okay, the ark was for protection, provision, preservation. It was about the presence of God. There was the dove, and it was about coming into a new era of promise. We, if we redeem the time, we will shift now truly from one era into an entire new era, and part of the new era we're shifting into is the great harvest. Okay. Um, why <laughs> do I, I, I do, James? What do you do? What, did, what do you do that are watching us right now 
uh, you started out talking uh, about Passover, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and we never got. So we we also not only are we under um, to a degree, uh, just like the Jewish people were confined to their house, so the angel of death would pass over because the blood of the lamb was that's over right. them. Uh, but we're coming to Pentecost, so that's a 50-day period, as we know. Yes. What can we, should we, be doing to, to build our ark for ourselves, our families, during this time? What should we be doing? Okay, this last Passover, and you know this, Sid, was historic. In Jerusalem, it's only the second time Passover has happened unto similarity of the original Passover. The original Passover is in quarantine under a plague, yes. and they applied the blood. This last Passover, just 10 days or so ago, two weeks ago, in Jerusalem, they celebrate Passover in the homes under lockdown in quarantine due to a plague. I'm only using that one illustration. If that was a historic Passover, and it was, guess what's coming? A historic Pentecost when the law was given, when Acts 2, the fire, the Holy Spirit was poured out, and then evangelism occurs. We are moving into, from Passover to Pentecost, we are going to shift into the, one of the greatest Passovers, excuse me, greatest Pentecost since the Azusa Street Revival, where there is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It will be like a coming out party for the church. We have waited. We have been with the Lord. And he's then, it's going to be one of the greatest seeing, sending, going periods of time that we have known in history. So how does it relate to each of us? Let's take this time, make sure that you get some time with the Lord. Make sure that you are repenting in behalf of you, your life, your family, and just confess any generational sins. Ask the Holy Excuse Spirit. Excuse me, I, 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 want, I want to say something about yeah, this. Yeah, please. Because it, it's a lost art, if you will. It's a lost word on Christian media. It's a lost word in the church. Uh, I know about repentance, especially being Jewish. Yes, However, and, and I have repented quite a bit. I had a lot to repent over. I didn't get saved till I, would, till I was 30. But mm -hmm. I am finding things now that mm -hmm. I need to repent of. It's like the Holy Spirit is revealing things at this point yes. that he hasn't revealed for the past uh, 30, 40 years mm -hmm. to me. It's, it's part of the package of, of, the, uh, of, of the global glory that is coming, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it's not about condemnation. Conviction no, and condemnation it's freedom. It's, it's, it's freedom. under freedom. It's yeah. under freedom. Condemnation lingers to oppress you. Conviction comes to cleanse you. And when you partner with conviction and sanctification, then you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And then you'll come out on the other side with greater character to carry the greater glory. So are you using Pentecost uh, or Shavuot? Yes. Are you using that as, for lack of better words, your point of contact to move into the new? Is that what I hear you saying? Yes, sir. Yes, I am. We're in a 50-day great reset from Passover to Pentecost. It's a time of crossing over a Joshua chapter 4 where the prophecies declared are on one side of the river Another generation arises, and there are messengers then who cross over. They walk in a culture of honor, and then they inherit the promises, which one of the major prophecies, it is now time to inherit, is the great harvest. And you made reference to the billion-soul harvest, especially of youth. 
It is now time. Excuse me, I hope people got that word, especially of youth. Yes. That's but that's a parallel of the original Passover. It was only the younger generation outside of a couple people like me that passed uh, over into the inheritance of the promises. And God is choosing. I'm going to dial down my intensity just a little bit, okay? Oh, you're making me intense. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I, I, feel, I feel something from the Holy Spirit that requires me, I think, to be a little more sensitive right now. I want to just speak to the individual out there. I want to go from the macro to the micro. And I want you to know this. God so cares about you. And he wants to remove any common ground that you might have with fear or depression, a spirit of heaviness, and casting it off the divine exchange. Because I know this can be a cliche, but I have, I'm still here. Those who know me well, you know my narrative, you know my storyline. Sid knows it. You, sure, you, you are only here by the grace of God. I know of three occasions where it took a miracle for you to be here, uh, or you would have been in heaven with a lot of the other Kansas City prophets. Yeah, and my late wife and Jill Austin and a bunch of other friends. Sid's Sid is here for such a time as this, to be a bridge, to carry the promises from a generation, because probably no one has an interviewed more prophets than Sid Roth. He's probably a steward of more prophetic revelation than, he's probably one of the top five people in the world that's a steward of prophetic revelation today. And it's because he's interviewed so many people, and you guys know what I'm saying, and a lot of diversity. And then we become a bridge, and I'm calling myself, I'm a bridge prophet right now, to carry the best of yesterday from the past to the present, from the present into the future. And God wants to encourage you that you are here for such a time as this, that he wants cleansing to happen from the spirit of fear because he wants us delivered. He wants you delivered. And so I just speak right now that you've not received the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I declare right now, put on your helmet a hope, a salvation, the positive expectation of good, because something good, something is going good, to happen to you. <laughs> something good. Oh boy. Now, if you talk about a tangible presence, it just fell on me. It is now he, it, it is all over me. I am like, whoa. I mean, it's like, yeah, I know it's a feeling, but it's not just a feeling. It's an anointing. This is not a cliche. What I'm going to declare is a living reality. Something good is just about to happen. Something good. I feel that presence of like the great cloud of witnesses looking in. I see Oral Roberts in that great cloud of witnesses right now. I see Papa Kenneth Hagen in the great cloud of witnesses. I see Derek Prince in the great cloud of witnesses. I see Catherine Kuhlman in the great cloud of witnesses. And, and there is, and, and, and there, there, they, God has a word. Heaven has a word to release to earth. Something good is just about to happen. Something good is just about to happen. It was 50 plus 70 years ago that three movements of God were birthed in the earth at the same time. The charismatic movement, the messianic movement, and the Jesus people movement. We are back in such a Kairos period of time, and it's going to be one of the greatest. The sending movement, an empowering movement, and a youth awakening that the world has never seen. I speak it forth, and God is going to move upon the Jewish people in diaspora, and God is going to move upon 
uh, the Middle East. He's going to move upon Iran. I've been prophesying for a decade that there will be the fastest church growth is going to happen in Iran and that there will be a people's revolution that will occur and that there will be Iran. Iran will run with the gospel in the name of Jesus, and there will be a people's revolution that will occur. And I declare that there will be a great new movement that will be relevant. It will be historic that will happen in the land of Israel. And I declare in the name of Jesus, we are passing over into a new empowering of fire, of presence, of gifting, and with the fire, character to carry the gift. I got to go back to this statement. Something good, mercy, receive it right now. Receive it for yourself. It's micro before it's macro. One time I was teaching out of the book of Numbers, and I said, and the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters covers the seas. The Holy Spirit interrupted me while I'm teaching, and he says, how do you think that will happen? And I go, uh, and I'm still teaching, and I go, uh, tell me. And he says, and I, and I recited again, the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. How do you think that will happen? And he said to me, one clay pot at a time. One clay pot at a time. You're the clay pot. You're the laborer in the rice fields. You're the laborer in the kitchen. You're the laborer in the family. You are the one. You are the one. And I speak over you a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit. I speak a fresh fire. I speak a fresh giftedness. I speak a fresh sanctification that burns out sin, iniquity, patterns, and even addictions. Someone is getting healed of diverticulitis right now. Someone is getting uh, the bloodstream, be getting healed of uh, leukemia. Someone, there's a healing of the uh, generational spirit of infirmity, and it's actually getting burned out by the fire of God. Someone with a stage four cancer in their lungs, I see a, a, something greater than radiation. It's Holy Ghost saturation of his presence, and it's it's a Holy Ghost, I, I, I don't know really what I'm talking about right now, Holy Ghost like protons, and it's because they're, 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 they're prophetic. It's, it's, it's prophetic presence, and it's going to infiltrate. I just see someone with a stage four lung issue and cancer, but that God has the remedy. God has the protection. God has uh, something for you. And I just speak forth provision, preservation, protection, presence of God to shift into the new era of the new promise in Jesus' name. And I have to say what a word you used at the beginning, uh, this, this broadcast, amen, so be it. Uh, James, I want you to come back because we haven't even scratched the surface. I know what God's put inside of you. And I, I also know that even, uh, as you said, the anointing changed at the end. I could feel it. It was an anointing of compassion and love that caused those words to just go into you. And I want to leave you. No, you tell me one thought, and I'm going to leave them with one thought. Okay. One thought. I'm going to speak to you to pray the Bible. I want to give you a key to your future. Pray the Word of God. Don't just read the Word. Pray the Word of God. And I want to give you Jeremiah chapter 29. God has a future, a hope, and a good welfare. Pray, proclaim, prophesy that word over your life and over your sphere. Pray, prophesy, proclaim. Don't just read. The word of God. God has a future, a hope, and a good plan, welfare for your life. And my last word is, in addition to what James just said, pray the word of God. Do something that Paul commands us to do. Pray 
without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Only way you can do that is in a supernatural language or tongues. Mm -hmm. I want you to be conscious at all times, mm -hmm. especially all this downtime you have. Mm -hmm. You can be praying perfect prayers with perfect faith, your whole future, your family's future, and the world's future. Those two things. Mm -hmm. Pray the word and pray in tongues. You'll drive the devil, Mashuga. That's, that's a Hebrew word for crazy. Crazy. Come I knew it. The next time, I'm going to have Jim. I don't know if next time, but I'll have him soon. And sure. But I'll tell you this. This has become a hot spot for God. Yes. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord make his face shine upon your face. And may you have shalom for such a time as this. This is James Gall with God Encounters Ministries, partnering with my friend Sid Roth with It's Supernatural. And we say together, God has something good that's just about to happen. Amen.